Hey music fans, as a roadie I had this great opportunity to tour with all these bands. I wrote a book about my experiences on the road and it was the number one new release on Amazon and Bios and it's now sold millions of copies on Kindle. I'm Joel Roadie and this is my podcast, Party Like a Rockstar. Have you heard of a band called Sabaton? Sabaton. Mm. No. Uh, before I uh, speak out of school, where are they from? Uh, so they too are European. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I think you'll do I mean, them. I mean, are, are they homeless or there's there a source country that they're from? No, there's some source country. I think <laughs> they're on from... park benches. Yeah. Well, so the singer of this band is actually, her husband is the drummer of this band, Sabaton. So I know that some of them are Swedish. Oh, I mean, this singer, the Nightwish singer. Her the Nightwish like, singer, oh. yeah. So I know that some of them are uh, Swedish. I just don't know if all of them are. That's why okay. it's my So answer. it's a Scandinavian, Northern European type. This episode features my friend, Kyle Toucher. Kyle's a bro. He was the front man of an influential Nardcore band out of Oxnard, California here by the name of Dr. No. If you've never heard of him, Influential's cool, and that Kurt Cobain was a fan. You guys can check him out in this photo here from when he was, I think it said 18 years old, but look at the poster on the wall. Look at the other one, too. I love some Black Flag. I hope you guys do, too. Anyway, what Kyle's been up to since then. So, Kyle wrote a track called Mr. Freeze. It was covered by Slayer. That led him on to some other ventures. He'll explain in one of these episodes but uh, he became a visual effects artist. He's been nominated for eight Emmys. He's won two Emmys. Those were for Firefly and Battlestar Galactica. He just recently worked on Top Gun in the visual effects department. More recent than that, what he actually started up here during COVID was writing. And so I have one of his books here, Live Wire. It was a present from him for my birthday last year. It was real cool. I appreciated it. You can read more about Kyle. You can check out his other books and see what he's up to always at kyletoucher.com. You can find his books also on amazon.com and enjoy. I also want to throw a thank you. A shout out to the people at Cream Magazine. <laughs> they sent me their newest issue. You can go to cream.com and you can subscribe to the magazine yourself. If you don't think Cream's cool, you're not cool. <laughs> it's great that we got some publications back, I think. I think it's neat. So anyway, let's jump into this episode here with Kyle and see what he has to say. <laughs> let's give it a go. Sabaton. Bismarck, about the battleship? Is this song about the battleship, Bismarck? Okay, so here's the deal with Sabaton. A lot of their tracks, and I've been told their very early tracks were not all history related, but this one clearly is, and all the ones I'm aware of are. They're about battles, they're about war, and I think these guys are super badass. You're a big history buff. Your history knowledge well, that, is yeah. amazing to me. Uh, when we've talked about certain things, but I, I feel that if you went down the road of listening to their catalog, mm -hmm. you would dig it. But uh, Have you ever seen a photo of the Bismarck? That fucking ship was gnarly really? <laughs> i mean oh yeah you should splice a photo of it in here when you do because the, that ship was it was just it was just a traveling gun platform that the germans built it was so fucking huge they couldn't i mean there was no place to port it i mean it was gigantic the thing was a sitting duck because so there was a uh you know the, the goal was to sink the bismarck because you know in those days you would park the thing off the coast and just shell the shit out of out of a place pound them into submission with artillery and uh, yeah, I mean, look up a picture of the Bismarck. It's absolutely frightening, that shit. Okay. Yeah. On it. Will. All right, let's jump into the track. You can let me know what you think. Let's give it sure. a go. So this is Sabaton. Okay. Sabaton, that's correct. So, did you find the boat?
Nice work, fellas. You liked it? I really like the effects work. So uh, what I don't know, was this song included in the soundtrack of a movie about the Bismarck? Because those are expensive shots. Not that I'm aware of. So this is pretty typical of a lot of their, their stuff. So there's a big VFX budget in those things. I don't the only know reason I bring that up for those for, for any of your viewers who don't know, I've been a CG artist for a long time. And uh, so I ended up stopped listening to the music and I was just kind of looking at the work. And uh, I noticed the first comp when they were on the boat and in the background, they'd put in a CG Bismarck coming to them in the Merc. And right there, and it, it was in the plate. It looked great. The silhouette of you could see how motherfucking big that boat was. That thing was a scary motherfucker. Yeah. You know? And uh, yeah, well, what I don't know, I, well, as, as it's documented in the thing, is that it went down in a naval battle. I, I, I don't remember whether or not that ship went down in a naval battle or through aerial bombardment, but maybe ships ganged up on it and sank it. But it was a big thing to get rid of that boat. That boat was a big problem in World War II. And uh, <clears throat> that effects work looked awesome. So uh, cool. that was great. And they're doing the, you know, they had their Judas Priest thing going and all that. The thing is very bold and, you know, they, they sound great. They play really well. I didn't even get a look at the drummer. To, uh, <laughs> the married guy. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like, he's the only married guy. Just in he was a married guy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where my wife is. I know is. about the band. I'm married, dude. <laughs> I don't know what city my wife's in. You know. But <laughs> well, uh, I'm gonna play another Sabaton track for you that I know you're gonna really get a kick out of. I uh, yeah, there was a lot of synth going on in the background. I think to me it sounded like maybe they didn't need that, but that's their thing. You okay, know, maybe, maybe that's a studio guy they hire. I have no idea, but. Uh, you know, big riffs, strong sound. Singer's very strong sounding. You know? Oh yeah, and plus he could be catcher somewhere with his uh, with his vest on everywhere if he wanted to play baseball. <laughs> and have himself a second career. Maybe when Cantrell leaves the band to go and Allison change, he plays. You know, maybe he plays for the Phillies or something. That's the Nightwish reference here. People will. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm gonna jump into a Sabaton track that they released more recently. It's a track by the name of 1916. And I think okay. you're going to really dig this. Well, that's gonna... World War One, so yeah. All right, let's jump into it. You can let me know what you think. Okay. <laughs> hey, the podcast is over. What are you still doing here? Well, while you're here, like and subscribe. Thanks.